What? Report. Operation Department, and personal account of concern. Very well. Sir, engineers, all personal account of Very well. Weapons Department, all personal account of course, sir. Very well. Support Department, personal account of sir. Very well. Welcome to the decommissioning ceremony of Coast Guard Cutter Chase. My name is Commander Byron Stewart. I'm the Executive Officer of Chase and I'll be your master of ceremonies this morning. For those carrying cell phones, please pace them in silent or turn them off during the uh, duration of the ceremony. Already joining me on stage is Chaplain Daniel Owens. If I could please ask the guests to arrive for the arrival of the official party. Presentation of the colors and national anthem and the invocation. Married, military guests in uniform, please remain covered and follow my lead for salutes. Now, Chase, arriving. Now, Pacific Area Defense Force West, arriving. Chaplain Owens will now offer the invocation. Personnel in uniform remain covered. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we assemble here this morning to honor the service to our nation, the U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Chase. Your 43 years of sea service has left a pronounced impact for the security of our country, as well as the saving of countless lives around the world. Your crew has served an array of duties from combat operations to Vietnam, Grenada, 
to the deployments to the Arctic Circle. His precipitation in operations in the Caribbean Sea has saved hundreds of lives to include the searching out and rescuing many Haitian people and overcrowded and disabled vessels. His narcotic and addiction missions have prevented billions of pounds of harmful substance from reaching our shores. This could not have been possible without each member of the crew, both past and present, serving through a sacrificial each day to prepare for each assigned mission. We ask now your blessing upon this ceremony, and that it would honor all those who have served upon this vessel. For this we pray in our Lord's name. Amen. Guests, please be seated. Ship's company, parade, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now my pleasure to introduce Commander Pacific Area and Defense Force West Vice Admiral Manson Brown. XL, please uh, place ship's company at ease. Aye, aye, sir. Ship's company at 10. Huh? At ease. Well, good morning. Good morning, good morning sir. What, what a great looking crowd. a great band. So I want to thank the Navy Band Southwest for adding to the significance of this ceremony. And our project officer, Lieutenant J.G. Whitney Troutman, where is she? I've not met her yet. She's on the ship. How about a hand for the project officer to put all of this together? 
And you can see uh, the officers, chiefs, and crew of Chase mustered around you. I think they look pretty sharp, and I think the ship has got that extra sparkle for today's ceremony. How about a hand for them? Now, as I intimated before, some may look on the decommissioning ceremony as a sad moment. But all sailors know and appreciate that the life cycle of a ship is in many respects like the life of a person. A commissioning ceremony affords the opportunity to marvel at the impressive capabilities of a new vessel, and we hope to do that again soon, and the chance to consider the many adventures that she and her crew will undertake together. On the other hand, a decommissioning ceremony gives us a chance to honor a proud ship, her distinguished service to a nation, and the dedicated and skilled crew that really, truly brought her to life. Any sadness of this particular decommissioning ceremony is mitigated by the fact that Chase will soon start a new life as a vessel in the Nigerian Navy. And I'm honored to welcome our Nigerian shipmates. Commodore Alolo, good to meet you again, sir. Captain Babalolo, and Commander Anakue. These gentlemen uh, are out here to celebrate, and very, very soon, after the ship transits to Alameda, they will take ownership of Mighty Chase. And we bid you fair winds with her and uh, all success as we've had with her. Now this ship is the third cutter to bear the name of Salmon P. Chase, who served as President Abraham Lincoln's Secretary of the Treasury during the Civil War. Secretary Chase had a distinguished record of service to this nation. In addition to being America's 25th Secretary of the Treasury, his public service included being a United States Senator from Ohio, Governor of Ohio, and the sixth Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Quite an impressive resume. Now reflecting the distinction of Secretary Chase's years of public service, Coast Guard Cutter Chase has served with distinction for 44 years. Chase has answered the nation's call whenever and wherever required since her commissioning in 1968. Reflective of Secretary Chase's public service during the Civil War, Coast Guard Cutter Chase has also served in combat. And some of you know what I'm talking about. During his 1969-70 deployment to Vietnam, Chase participated in Operation Market Time, which was the effort to interdict the flow of North Vietnamese and Viet Cong troops and supplies into South Vietnam. During her time in Southeast Asia, Chase participated in more than 12 gunfire support missions, and she received the Navy Meritorious Accommodation and the Vietnam Service Medal. In 1983, Chase participated in Operation Urgent Fury, which was the invasion, the American invasion of Grenada, and was honored with the Armed Forces Expeditionary Medal. And in 1994, Chase returned to the Caribbean as a defender of freedom, leading U.S. forces in the Port-au-Prince Harbor during Operation Uphold Democracy. During this particular operation, which restored the democratically elected government in Haiti, Chase provided critical command, control, and communication support to U.S. and allied forces and established the first Harbor Defense Command in foreign territorial waters. In 1997, Chase was the first cutter to participate in the Cooperation of Float Readiness and Training, or CARA, exercise in Southeast Asia, strengthening America's bonds with our partners in the Pacific. In 1998, Chase operated with a U.S. Navy strike group conducting military interdiction operations in the Persian Gulf. While in the Persian Gulf, she enforced United Nations sanctions against the regime of Saddam Hussein, intercepting vessels and taking enforcement action for those in violation of United Nations mandates. Chase served as the host for the historic reopening 
of the American consulate in Vladivostok, Russia in 1992. And Chase made history in 1999 when she became the first U.S. military vessel to visit the country of Nicaragua in over 30 years. Indeed, Chase has represented the United States the world over. Her ports of call include countries such as the Republic of Philippines, Thailand, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Singapore, Cuba, Jamaica, the United Kingdom, France, Denmark, Norway, Ireland, Spain, Portugal, Italy, and Morocco. So shipmates and ladies and gentlemen, there's a special relationship that exists between a cutter and the sailor, especially a ship with as long and distinguished a service record as Chase. Her sustained performance over 44 years is a testament to the closeness of that relationship between cutter and crew. And I know that each and every sailor that served in Chase takes great pride in these now legendary accomplishments of this cutter and her crew. For those that did serve in Cutter Chase, WHEC 718, laboring about her debts and in her engine room, I know that you will also always treasure your time aboard her, and I know that you will recount many of your very special memories at the reception. It's because of your efforts and those that have honorably served in her that Chase has indeed lived up to her motto, no challenge too great. Today we also pay tribute to the last crew of Chase, and by symbolic extension we also pay tribute to all past sailors of Chase. So EXO at this time please call the ship's company to attention. Aye aye sir. Ship's company at 10. What? <coughs> A word detail? Post. The Commandant of the United States Coast Guard takes pleasure in presenting the Coast Guard Unit Commendation to U.S. Coast Guard Cutter Chase, WHEC 718, San Diego, California, for service as set forth in the following citation. For exceptionally meritorious service from January 2009 to March 2011 while completing service to the United States that has spanned more than four decades, demonstrating unparalleled expertise in counter-drug operations in the Eastern Pacific in January 2009, Chase interdicted and seized a self-propelled semi-submersible vessel carrying over 7.5 tons of cocaine. As one of the first SPSs captured by the Coast Guard, the seizure resulted in the prosecution of four drug traffickers and prevented more than $400 million worth of cocaine from reaching the United States. In August 2009, Chase conducted the first joint boarding team training program with the Peruvian Coast Guard, laying the foundation for future law enforcement operations and strengthening cooperative partnerships in the region. Suffering major casualties to both main diesel engines in September 2009, Chase undertook the daunting year-long task of conducting simultaneous center section overhauls. Despite the demands of the intensive repair effort, Chase deployed nearly a third of its crew throughout the Coast Guard in support of major operations both afloat and ashore. Chase crew members were on the ground in Haiti after the devastating earthquake and also deployed to the Coast Guard-wide response to the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. Further demonstrating the professionalism of Chase's crew, the response to the crankcase explosion in October 2010 preserved vital machinery evidence which proved critical in the development of new overhaul and operating procedures, potentially saving millions of dollars in repair costs and lost operating days. The professionalism, pride, and devotion to duty displayed by Coast Guard Cutter Chase during this period are in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Coast Guard. The operational distinguishing device is authorized for the Commandant, Manson K. Brown, Vice Admiral, U.S. Coast Guard Commander, Pacific Area. For those of you that don't know, a unit accommodation is the highest award that a unit can receive, and it certainly is my honor to present it to this great team today. I want to say to the men and women of Chase's crew, past and present, on behalf of our Commandant, 
Admiral Robert J. Papp, Jr., and all of Team Coast Guard. And on behalf of this community in San Diego and indeed patriots throughout America, I want to express commendation and bravo Zulu to you for your valiant service. And specifically,
can do what we do without the support that we have from Metal Shore. And, uh, and the, extent, the extended Chase family deserves credit uh, for their support of the Chase crew. Not just today's family, but the entire family for 44 years. Even members of the Chase Association have brought the ex part of the extended Chase family. Uh, the total contingent is almost 30 people of the Chase Association. Although well, Chase is being decommissioned, the Chase crew, the heartbeat of Chase, uh, and the Proud Cutter Chase, will carry on together in our next assignment on another 378 on the Sherman. Although we won't be known as the Chase crew anymore, I'm sure the Chase magic and the Chase legacy will continue to make every member of the Chase Association proud. Admiral Brown, on behalf of the Chase, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for the presentation of the unit commendation today. Although a large focus of the recognition was on engineering accomplishments and uh, not on more traditional and more glamorous, if you will, Coast Guard missions at sea that have characterized Chase service in the past. Uh, but the crew here today, still on board Chase, they may not have had the opportunity to distinguish itself like previous chasers in combat in Vietnam or Grenada or the many other operations of national importance in the long and distinguished history of Chase. However, that is only because of opportunity. I'm confident that had this crew been given a similar opportunity, they would have only added to the proud legacy of Chase and the crews that sailed in her. Lastly, Chase is being decommissioned not because she's no longer useful. It's simply that newer ships are now available to do the mission. In fact, Chase is, is definitely in the best mechanical and electrical condition she has been in for the last five or 10 years after all the work we've put in. In fact, less than two weeks ago, Chase was underway on gas turbines and we're moving along at maximum design speed. So Chase has a lot of life left in her. And my only regret is that I have to decommission Chase instead of proudly transferring command to the 24th commanding officer. However, I think I can take solace in that I will technically, I guess, always be on watch because I will never be relieved from command of Chase. <laughs> Attention to orders. Ship's company, a 10. Hut. From Commandant to Commanding Officer Coast Guard Cutter Chase, you're directed to decommission Coast Guard Cutter Chase no later than 31 March 2011. Following a decommissioning ceremony in home port, place Coast Guard Cutter Chase in commission special. Chase's former crew will sell Chase to Alameda, where she will be placed out of commission and transferred to the government of Nigeria, contingent upon a final agreement under the Foreign Assistance Program. Chase's crew will permanently relieve Coast Guard Cutter Sherman's crew in Alameda and will continue to conduct operations on Sherman out of San Diego. XO, make preparations to decommission the United States Coast Guard Cutter Chase. Hi, hi, Captain. Reports. Very well. Sir, shaft is locked. All valves are closed. Sea chest is secured. The tiller's been lashed to midships. Very well. Sir, the cannonballs have been removed. The cannons have been spiked. Very well. Sir, all rations have been committed and the galley fire is doused. Very well. Captain, Chase is ready for decommissioning. Very well. XO, have the ship's company lay ashore. Aye, aye. Ship's company, lay ashore.
approximately 170 men and women who make up Chase's crew are organized into four departments, operations, engineering, weapons, and support. Within these departments, each crew member's primary responsibility is typically determined by their technical or operational specialty or rates, such as bosun's mate, machinery technician, gunner's mate, or yeoman. The crew you see forming to the left, to your left, represents 13 different Coast Guard rates, all of whom work together to ensure Chase is fully ready to execute our primary missions, including law enforcement, search and rescue, and defense readiness operations. In addition to their primary duties, virtually every crew member has at least one and usually several collateral duties. These may include serving as a member of a law enforcement boarding team, small boat coxswain or crewman, force protection team, flight deck crew, or they may serve as subject matter experts on one or more of Chase's five training teams, including the damage control training team and combat systems training team. Regardless of the mission, task, watch, or specialty, every Chase crew member carries out their duties and responsibilities with the highest level of professionalism and dedication and embodies our core values of honor, respect, and devotion to duty. Strike eight bells. Strike eight bells. Fall down the colors. Will the guests please rise? Hand salute. Please be seated. Ship's company, hooray, rest. Presentation detail, front and center. Chief Warrant Officer Boyle, Petty Officer Wagon, fall out and join the captain on stage. The captain now will, will now present the national ensign to the crew member with the most years of service, Chief Warrant Officer Matthew Boyle. The captain will now present the Union Jack to the crew member with the most time on board, Storekeeper Second Class, Jonathan Wigan.
As a symbol of his command, the final commissioning pennant is presented to Captain Gregory J. Samuel. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please rise for the benediction and remain standing for the playing of Semperatus, the, the retirement of the colors, and the departure of the official party. Ship's company, attend. Hup. Always attend. Hup. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we close this ceremony, we ask you to bless me upon this crew and the legacy that the ship has left for our nation. May you bless the work that will still be needed to be performed forward in the upcoming days. May your blessing also be upon those that made this ceremony possible and their diligence to make this ceremony such a memorable event for all those who have attended. Please continue to bless our nation and its Coast Guard in the mission of serving, protecting, and saving others. For this we pray in our Lord's name. Amen. Color Guard, retire the colors. Colors are hooked. Force West departing. Now Chase departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. Please join us on the flight deck for refreshments. Chase is open for guided tours. If you're interested, please ask any crew member for assistance. Department heads, take charge of and dismiss your departments.
Uh, during your years of service, Chase thought through many crews who served with pride, dedication, and kind of the U.S. Coast Guard. In honor of Chase crews, past and present, the captain is presenting the National Ensign, the Union Jack, and the Coast Guard Ensign, all recently flown on board Chase to three distinguished former Chasers and members of the Chase Association. Joining the captain are Captain Wendell Driggers, retired and served as the executive officer from 1969 to 1970. Radio Men 2nd Class, Alan McDonald, who served on board from 1970 to 1972. And flight owner Alan Ricker, who served as a seaman on board Chase from 1968 to 1970. Both Captain Driggers and Seaman Ricker served on board Chase during her tour in Vietnam. Chase's motto, No Challenge, Too Great, was inspired during their time on board and has continued to motivate generations of crews that follow because once a chaser, always a chaser. Congratulations and thank you. We have uh, one more uh, presentation. Uh, Mr. McDonald uh, will be uh, representing the Chase Association and giving the uh, President's address. To the crew, Chase, officers, and all the distinguished guests. From Essex, from Essex Shore to Europe to Far East. This is what we did on the Chase in three years plus the service. I just want to send a little message from my husband of the association. First of all, thank you, Captain, for, and for all of your cooperation and support that you've given us during the time that we're going through this commissioning. Kind of like a bittersweet day for us today. We're, we're so proud of the Chase and all the crew members who served under it, and especially to see the new Chasers today. It's, uh, it's just amazing the strides that the Chase did over the, the past years and what we did. And I know this tradition as you bring on to the Sherman, we're going to continue the Chase pride in the Sherman. Please. There was a lot of talk about us, uh, a lot of talk about that among us in the dinner last night about you guys going to the Sherman. But just remember you're chasers. <laughs> so I, I know that the Chase will set its compass and start a new direction and it will come back again as another cutter. I feel confident that it will. And also, I just want to state that from all the members of the Chase Association to be here, we're proud of all of you. Thank you for your service, and I know you continue in a great tradition in the United States as back to the Chase. And always bring with you no challenge too great. Thank you. Thank you. 